engages in that interaction, how the disciples are behaving while he's away. Um, I've got a couple of maybe observations to share, but before I do, I want to open it up. Any reflections or questions, opinions on anything that we saw tonight? Barbara. This is all that creative license you were talking about, right? Because I don't remember rereading any of this in any of the Gospels, him being brought in for questioning yeah. and them panicking and all reacting weird. So right. yeah. this is all just kind of moot reflection. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of this episode was uh, in that category, yeah. That being said, um, it establishes some things that that will that are important for what is in Scripture. Uh, when Jesus is brought before Pilate, Pilate struggles to find anything wrong with him. Right? And this is uh, some precedent for that. Quintus is questioning him, not fully understanding him, kind of annoyed with him, but he sees him as quite harmless. Uh, and that same moment, Jesus is arrest and what becomes his and his crucifixion um, the disciples they all flee right well they haven't fled here but they also haven't exactly behaved like true disciples they panicked talked among themselves kind of blaming each other um, were struggling to s decide if they were really going to do what Jesus said and even offering some creative interpretations to justify how they could do what they want to do and do what Jesus said at the same time so, um, yeah, a lot of creative license, but it, it does tie into some themes that are certainly there in the Gospels. Anything else? It, um, one of the things that went through um, this showing here to me was trust. Trust his word. Trust what he tells us. Yeah. No matter what's going on around you. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and Jesus, when he comes back, he talks to the disciples a little bit about that. He talks about, you know, it's, it's only going to get more difficult from here. And he says, you know, it's not, it would not be good if you all kept shutting down every time things got difficult. And he even says, what will you do when I'm away, like when I'm gone? And they don't fully, I think, catch what he means by that. But, of course, we do, living on the other side of the ascension. So there's a little, there's a good model there for what Christians do today as Jesus is away. He's, Jesus mentioned there, I told you to, you know, keep planning and things. And, well, while we're here, we can keep on doing his will, um, even while he's away. Uh, so, yeah. Kelsey. I think another uh, little connection here that we can see, uh, even though there was a lot of creative license, but just... Um, like Jesus's character that we see all throughout scripture, they brought up, you know, you went to pray before you came back here to tell us you were back. Yeah. And there was all this happening and you were praying as though that was not such an important thing. And yeah. it just struck me so many times, you know, when Jesus finds out about John and he goes to a desolate place to pray and times when he needs to be alone. And then of course in the garden, you know, yeah. Jesus disciples should have been praying. Right. And of course he, at the end of this episode, he teaches them the Lord's Prayer. And in the garden, when he tells his closest followers, you know, stay here and watch and pray. And he goes off to pray to his father, and they just fall asleep. And it's just, yeah. it's like they don't view that, and we don't often view that as more important than anything else. You know, something that should be priority in a desperate situation, you know. And um, instead of panicking or going straight to blaming you know, this person or that person for circumstances. Like, he he wants them to model after him and pray. And I, I love how, I wish we could have heard the rest of the prayer and him explaining why you start it this way and why you should say this, because I think that's really, really meaningful. Um, yeah. And one other thing, it's been interesting to see how much uh, two of the disciples have grown, um, Simon and uh, Matthew. They've grown so much in this season, just like it, First of all, they're not hating each other as much anymore, but Simon was being like the voice of reason in this episode yeah. when in the past he would have been the first to go after Jesus. And you see Andrew doing that, you know, and 
and Simon trying to learn from Jesus and saying, we can do better. You know, in Matthew, he said that he loved Jesus. And I just thought that was so amazing because he's not one who probably is super in touch with his feelings or emotions and Jesus coming to him to, you know, start writing this sermon. I think this, I, I love seeing their characters develop. Yeah. Um, and one last thing, I think the women also, we, not scriptural, but we see such a precedent in scripture for the women being the ones to stay with Jesus, to stay faithful to him, to listen to what he said, to be there at the cross, to be there at the graveside, you know. And I think in this episode especially, you see these different women being the voice of reason, being the trusting ones of Jesus. And I think that's a very biblical thing that we see of the followers of Jesus yeah. uh, as women. I think that was great that they brought that out. Yeah, as I, I thought the same thing about Peter. Uh, we see a little bit of his... Uh, you could almost call it pastoral sensitivity starting to develop. He's, he's kind of a good counselor to Andrew as Andrew is panicking. Of course, it doesn't really have a positive effect on Andrew because he's a little too deep in his panic. But Peter is clearly, he's developed the ability to actually be a little bit calm while someone is panicking, which is a big step for Peter because he hasn't been that way through most of the show so far. Yeah. Um, so Bob and then Nathaniel. I have... Three things I'd like to comment on. Number one is Jesus was telling his followers that the signs and wonders will cease, but my word will continue. And that we can see that today. Uh, we have to continue his word, his teaching, because there are no signs and wonders today. And number two, I would like to comment on, he says, be not afraid. I will be back. Yeah. And we notice on that third day, he did come back. And yeah. number three, I'd like to come in on prayer. Jesus uh, was telling his disciples, telling his followers to uh, pray to get your mind and your heart right. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. And that's what's so important about prayer today. We have to have a we have to have a prayer life to keep our minds and our hearts right. Yes, absolutely. And that was that was the one nugget here that has definite roots in scriptures. At the end, Jesus teaches the apostles, the disciples, to pray just like they ask him to. Yeah, uh, Nathaniel. Or Dave. Um, one thing to go along with prayer is you're not only supposed to pray, but you're supposed to commune with other Christians around you and yeah. get feedback from them. So that's why Simon and his brother, I like how Simon was the strong one in this instance and his yeah. brother was the weak one. We need yeah. each other to bounce those ideas yeah. off of because yeah. we're not always the strong one. Yeah, and that's a good balance, the, the isolating yourself to pray, but also needing the group. Uh, others around you, that's, that's the balance of the Christian life. We need time to commune one-on-one -on -one with God. We also need time to be with God's people. And those, those two things are not mutually exclusive. We don't need to have only one and not the other. Uh, we need both. Something I also thought of before, real quick before you go, Nathaniel. Um, so a couple episodes ago, Mary had something traumatic happen in her. They brought up bad things from her past, and she panicked and fled. Andrew, has, as a disciple of John, had... Now Jesus is taken and he's panicking. So it's a good reminder to be conscious of areas in our lives, maybe weaknesses or things that have happened in the past that might test us in the present when certain things happen. Uh, because we're seeing different pressure points of the disciples getting pushed as, as Jesus' ministry goes on. And that's a good lesson for us too, I think. Uh, Nathaniel. I was just going to draw the point that this uh, episode had a good similarity to the garden when Jesus was arrested. It's kind of like what you were saying yeah. at the beginning. But um, it has actually uh, John 18, 8, I think. It said, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so the words that, that he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost, I have not lost one of those you gave me. Verse 10, then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant. Uh, cutting off his right ear. Verse 11, Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup that he, the Father has given me? And so when I was uh, considering all the similarities that this, even though this was very creative, it has some biblical ties where, you know, uh, you had some guys in the group that were ready to draw blood to protect Jesus, and he said, no, stop. You know, yeah. I'll go peacefully. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that's a good reminder that the way me we may want to get things done 
um, is not always the way of Christ, not always the way God calls us to get things done, and not always the way Jesus did things. Yeah. Tracy. This episode really made me think of, about, you know, what they must have been going through during these times they didn't really understand. And, you know, some of the panic, they had seen John go to prison, and, you know, they're thinking that, that, that things would end if something happened to Jesus. Yeah. You know, instead of thinking, you know, instead of understanding the larger picture, which we can see now, and so sometimes, you know, I don't really stop and think about what it must have been like for them to be growing through, you know, and learning these things as they went on and trying to grasp what was actually happening. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, Jesus doesn't even always, he often does not even try to give them the bigger picture. He just gives them simple instructions, and the, the goal is for them to trust those instructions and follow them. And uh, what a lesson for us today. You know, we can see the bigger picture of these things because it's 2,000 years ago and we have scripture. But in our daily lives, things are happening all around us, and we can't see the bigger picture. We can't always see what God's intentions are for the things going on around us in our individual lives or in the world. Um, and there was, what we have from God is the same. We have teachings to trust and follow him, trust and obey, like our hymn goes. And... Um, that's what we're called to do. Kelsey. Oof, sorry. Um, I just, one little thing that popped in my head from the book of Acts uh, that was like the opposite of, of Andrew's feelings, like quieting, you know, be quiet, be quiet, don't talk about Jesus, don't talk about Jesus. Don't spread what he's done. Don't talk about the miracles. Don't talk about who he is uh, because, you know, this could be lead to a war. This could all end. And then you think about the New Testament, you know, when they're before the, um, the council, and they're like, don't speak any more in Jesus' name. And they're like, sorry, we can't help but speak of what we have seen and yeah. heard. Like, it, it's like, what a transformation being a follower of Jesus can be. And getting to see that transformation um, is just so incredible, and, and it can happen with us, too, you know. And I just think that's such a, an amazing image of being so scared and fearful and Jesus is saying, you know, you can't be because what's going to happen when I'm not here? And then being able to share without yeah. fear of your own life being taken. Yeah. And that's just a huge inspiration for I, us. I thought, I had a similar thought when that, the Ethiopian woman, she used almost word for word that line from Acts. She did say, like, I can't help but talk about this. Uh, and that reminds us how, how it works in, on the pages of the New Testament, Jesus will do something maybe in private and sometimes even tell the people to keep it quiet, and the report about him just spreads anyway, and that's exactly what's happening uh, in The Chosen as well. Um, we pass the microphone back to Jonathan. Um, what you mentioned about um, Jesus um, just telling them simple directions, I thought it was interesting that he wanted all four to be fishing, and maybe that was so they wouldn't panic like they did, yeah. you know, James and John. But when they didn't do it, he was like, okay, you know, we'll just, he didn't, he didn't force them to go. Yeah. So it's interesting how he was able to um, respect people's free will. Yeah. And even like with uh, Quintus, he, recognize his authority as God given um, and so he he was able to speak to the, the Roman soldiers in a way that showed them respect and then they kind of opened up to him you know and they were asking him stuff like what are you doing <laughs> and so he, he he didn't like he, he did you know speak the truth to Quintus like you know I can't promise you know that I'm not going to cause you more trouble, but he did it in a way that was respectful, which yeah. was interesting. Yeah, um, you're right, he absolutely did, and I, I, I was rather impressed with the way they had Jesus give very measured responses to Quintus that, that didn't compromise anything, 
but they were appropriate for the context he was in. Yeah. Nathaniel. I actually thought about that a lot, and I was kind of going to say something about it. Was it, uh, if you're being questioned by the police, you want to give answers that are fluid and they are uh, the truth, but you don't want to give too much information because you can easily talk yourself into trouble. And uh, I, I really liked how they had him give very clear answers, but they were also just vague enough that he didn't talk himself into trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be a good model for certain situations Christians are in, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, even, even interpersonal relationships, yeah. Especially if we're thinking about doing evangelism and trying to, to uh, maybe grow on someone slowly, yeah. Something that I wanted to mention, uh, I don't know this for, it's already 801, so I'll, we better close it with this comment, but I don't know this for a fact, because I guess we'll have to see in future episodes, but do you remember when Philip and Andrew were talking to that Ethiopian woman, trying to tell her to be quiet, and a member of the Sanhedrin comes up in disguise, and he says his name is Yusuf. What name does that sound like? It's like Joseph. I'm wondering if this is going to be the man who is Joseph of Arimathea, who uh, later, in, after Jesus is crucified, he uh, assists in burying Jesus, provides a tomb for him. I don't know, but it would make sense um, why there's a fair... What did you say? Yeah, yeah. He knows Nicodemus, and both of them are there in John for Jesus' burial, and he's sympathetic at least a little to what Jesus' followers are doing. He's trying to get them out of trouble. So it would make sense if that is who that character is going to be revealed to be, but I could be wrong. All right, well, it's a little after 8, so we should close now. Um, bow with me in prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father God, thank you for bringing us together tonight. Uh, thank you for this time and for the discussion we've had. Father, we ask that um, you will help us to continue to grow as, as your followers and as your disciples, and that at this time, while your son is away, that you will help us to do his will, to follow uh, the teachings you have given us in your word, to trust in you. And Father, we ask that you will continue to grow us and develop us. We all know we have shortcomings. We all know we have areas that can be refined to look more like your son. And we ask that you bless us and and in your own good time and in your own way, continue to mold us to look more like the followers of your son that you desire us to be. Go with us as we leave here, as we go back to our homes, uh, and as we continue through this week. In Jesus' name, amen.